hello everyone hope everyone is fine and doing good so what is update well update is this is gonna be the ninth video on kinematics video lecture series in this video we will see the equations of motion of uniformly accelerated motion in details and we will see the numerical techniques to solve the problem in kinematics we will understand this by taking the examples of motion under gravity and at last we will be solving juggler problems so let's get started so let's first derive the equations of motion of uniformly accelerated motion in a quick way so here we have acceleration is equal to dv by dt and on rearranging the terms dv is equal to a into dt let's do the integration of the differential term within their proper range and after doing uh, the integration we obtain this is v minus u is equal to a t2 minus t1 okay here let's uh, take t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is equal to t so what we have assumed here we have assumed t1 is the instant of time at which the observer has just started observing the motion okay so here if we rearrange the term then we can write down v is equal to u plus a t so this is what uh, the first equation of motion now the beauty of this equation is it is the vector equation so what does it mean i should put arrow over all the vector quantities over here so this is the equation number one now by using this equation i want to find out uh, the relation between position of the object and time t so for this what should i need to do i need to replace this v by the time derivative of x so i can do it as this is dx by dt is equal to u plus at let's rearrange the term it is u into dt plus a t into dt let's do the integration of all the differential terms within their proper range so if we perform all the integrals then we obtain it is x2 minus x1 is equal to u t2 minus t1 plus half a t2 square minus t1 square and let's do the same thing over here put uh, t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is equal to t so we obtained x1 is equal to x1 plus ut plus half a t square again this is what uh, this is a vector equation so i have taken arrows over all the vector quantities okay so this is the second equation now I want to derive the third equation so for this we have uh, v dv over dx is equal to a and let's rearrange all the terms v dv equal to a dx of this let's take the integration within their proper range after performing this integration we obtain v square minus u square upon 2 is equal to 2a x2 minus x1 let's take uh, x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to x after substituting this condition over here then it is v square is minus u square is equal to 2ax so this is uh, the derivation of all the three equations now let's take uh, some important points about all these equations the beauty of equations of motion lies behind the way we use these equations to solve any problem in kinematics now while solving the problem in kinematics we should have some steps in our mind now let's take a look on all these steps step number one first uh, determine the condition whether acceleration is equal to constant and if it is constant then the second step is write uh, down all equations of motion after it uh, the third step is determine sine of a acceleration vector a and initially velocity vector u this is the very important step because after this step you can have different cases case number one is 
if uh, acceleration and initially velocity vector are in opposite direction and the second case is both acceleration and u are in same direction okay now let's take a look on this particular case if uh, this is the case then definitely it is going to be the case of u turn right now here in this case we will take acceleration as negatively sign and we will take initially well velocity vector is positively sign and the position of the object will be taken as positively sign now if uh, particle takes u turn and crosses its origin point then after it we will take the sign of uh, velocity vector is negative and the sign of position of the object will also be negative so this is the condition after taking u turn after taking u turn and crossing the origin point okay now what about this this is a very simple case here we will take the sign of all the parameters will be positive okay so this is the particular case case number one and case number two now most of the time in kinematics we solve the problem in such a way that we have to determine the basic parameters for a particular time interval now in order to analyze the motion of the object within that time interval we should have the knowledge of uh, all the basic parameters now let's take a look on this simple example now let's take a look on uh, this simple question here we have a ball at a height of 100 meter from the ground level and uh, this ball is thrown up with the speed 50 meter per second now the first part of uh, this question is what is path taken by the ball and sometimes uh, we also call it as trajectory okay so when we talk about the trajectory then it simply means we are talking about the path okay now the answer of uh, this question can be given by using uh, our common sense as we generally experience in our day-to-day -day life uh, when any object is being thrown up from uh, surface earth surface then it moves in such a way that uh, its speed going to decrease and after some time it comes at halt and then reverse its direction of motion and ultimately hits the ground so this is what uh, this is the trajectory taken by the moving particle basically here it is a ball okay so this is the answer of uh, this first question now if we take a look on all the three equations of uh, motion v equal to u plus a t s equal to ut plus half a t square and the third one is v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s here if we look at each and every equation over here we can say here we have four variable v u a t here we have s u a t and here we have v u a s and out of these four variable we have one variable is constant this is what uh, acceleration right acceleration that is because of gravity right now the question is what is this acceleration due to gravity acceleration of gravity is uh, the value of the acceleration that produced because of the force that is exerted by the earth on its surrounding object and practically the value of this acceleration is taken as constant so we take this value as uh, 10 meter per second square right and sometimes uh, yeah that is also true that the value of this g is 9.8 meter per second square as well 
but let's take it is a 10 meter per second square to make the mathematical calculation easy for us right so out of these four variables we have uh, one variable is constant and out of the remaining three if we have any two values then we can solve for the remaining one now let's take a look on the second part of this question suppose if i want to find out uh, this height from this point and let's call this as h max why i'm calling this as x max because this is the point at which the particle comes at halt so for this let's take a look on uh, which equation is uh, best fit for this so let's assume if it is s equal to ut plus half at square then you can say that we have the information of only u right a is constant then we know it what is this value but we have the information of this u but what about this time t so for this i need to consider one more equation so for this i will look again on this equation and we will see to determine time we have this equation so let's use this equation over here this is v equal to u plus at and here we have v is the speed of this ball at this point so this is zero and if i solve all this value over here this is zero equal to 50 this is plus 50 right why it is the 50 plus 50 because in at the time of projection initial velocity and acceleration both are in opposite direction and i already mentioned that if this is the case then we treat acceleration as to be negatively signed so this is what uh, if acceleration is negative then u is positive so here we have acceleration is 10 and that will give it mt equal to 5 second now let's plug in the value time at equal to 5 into this then we will be having the value of s this is equal to 10 into 5 minus half into 10 and it is 5 square so if we solve it then it is uh, it is what it is actually 50 right so this is 250 minus 125 and the value comes out to be 125 meter okay so this is the solution of uh, the second part of this question now let's take a look on third part of this question third part of this question is what is uh, time taken by the ball to reach at the uh, same level so basically here we want to find out what is the time taken by the ball in going from point 1 to point 2 where both uh, points 1 and 2 lie at the same level so for this let's assume this is capital T and I can write down this capital T in terms of T1 and T2. What is this T1? T1 is the time of ascent. Time of ascent is the time taken by the ball in going from 1 to maximum height. Similarly, we can say T2 is the time taken by the ball to reach at this point 2 from maximum height point. Okay. And we have already calculated uh, this T1 is how much? This is 5 seconds. So let's plug in this value here. And if uh, T1 is equal to 5, then I say that T2 is also equal to 5. So if we plug in over here, then capital T comes out to be 10 second. Now you should ask a question, why I have wrote it down T2 equal to 5 second. So for this, to verify it math mathematically, I take this part of uh, the motion separate. Here velocity is 0 so u equal to 0 and let's assume if uh, this is the velocity v at this point and uh, the time is t now i want to find out uh, this time t i just want to verify this is equal to 5 seconds so for this what i can do if i take a look on this uh, on these equations over here then i can say this equation is the best fit for this uh, given information so let's apply this s equal to ut plus half a t square here s is uh, we already know it is uh, 125 meter but this time i will consider this as negative sign because i am going in vertically downward direction so this is the direction of acceleration right so this is uh, minus 125 and u is 0 this is uh, plus half 
acceleration is minus 10 and it is t square so this will give me time t equal to how much this is under root 20 this is 250 divided by 10 and it comes out to be 5 second right so we have verified this t to equal to 5 second now suppose if i want to find out what is the velocity at this point now i say the same thing that is exactly equal to 50 meter per second and you can verify it by using this equation v equal to u plus at so this is u this is zero and acceleration is how much this is uh, minus 10 time is 50 so velocity comes out to be minus 50 meter per second why it is a negative sign because the bowel is going vertically upward not in upward that is going vertically downward direction right so this is the way we have calculated velocity equal to 50 meter per second here now take a look on the fourth part of this question and here in this we want to find out uh, total time taken by the ball to hit the ground so basically here we want to find out the time taken by the ball after going through this way and it hits the ground at this point 3 okay so for this what i can do i can take this as capital t and it can be written as 5 plus 5 plus t why it is uh, 5 and 5 over here because 1 5 is for time of ascent and 1 5 is for time of descent now this uh, small t is for this extra portion so now let's take uh, this portion over here so this is point 2 this is point 3 and here it is what uh, 100 meter down here we have u equal to 50 meter per second now i want to find out uh, the time taken by the ball to hit uh, this point from this point okay so for this i can use v equal to u plus at so it is minus 50 minus 10 into t here we have two unknown values so for this v i can use this equation v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s and here it is minus 50 square plus 2 minus 10 acceleration is minus 10 because we have already taken acceleration in the negative direction right similarly this s can be taken as minus 100 meter so this will give me under root of uh, 4500 and it will give me two values positive and negative 30 under root 5 now i should take negative value over here because i am going down so my direction is in negative direction right so i will take this negative sign and put it over here so here it is minus 30 under root 5 is equal to minus 50 minus 10 into t so this will give me t equal to 50 minus 30 under root 5 divided by minus 10 now if i put this value over here then i will be getting total time t it is 10 plus 50 minus 30 under root 5 divided by minus 10 so this is the time taken by the ball to hit the ground now this is the time to discuss the juggler problem so now let's discuss it you must have seen a person throwing several balls up into the air and then catches and throw them up repeatedly so that uh, more than one ball remain in air and this is something we called juggling now to understand juggling we have some important parameters now let's take a look on each and every parameter here we have throwing speed each ball is thrown at uh, some speed and it is called throwing speed it is represented by letter u it is same for every ball now the second parameter is time gap now to understand time gap uh, we have uh, following points it is time taken between 
any two consecutive throw and second point is it is also the time taken to transfer one ball from one hand to other hand and getting it projected again into air so by this time the ball remains in hand so that's why it is also called what the stay time now to maintain juggling time gap that should also equal to stay time it is a very important condition to maintain juggling now the third parameter is total number of balls a juggler do this phenomena by taking fixed number of balls let's suppose it is capital n and it is written as n minus 1 plus 1 what is this basically n minus 1 represent number of ball in air then what is this one this is the number of balls which remain in hand so it is equal to one only and we will see how it is so this is the third parameter now the fourth parameter is time of flight time of flight is the time taken by the ball to remain in air here we generally talking about a single ball so I can take this is the time taken by one ball okay and also time of flight for each and every ball is same it is same for every ball okay now the fifth point is maximum height maximum height is what uh, the maximum distance traveled by one ball up into the air and also this is same for every ball okay so this is uh, so these are what uh, the important uh, parameters which are necessary to understand now let's take a look on what happens during juggling so it is important to understand each and every parameters so now let's take a look on that now let's assume i have only one ball and i project it up into the air with speed u it uh, takes uh, this path and comes to my second hand let's assume if uh, capital T is uh, time of flight and I can write down this time of flight as twice of u by g I can expect that uh, you are already familiar with this formula if it is not then let's take a look on how we can derive this so here this is the point of halt and let's assume uh, the time taken by this ball to go up to this height it is t1 and the time taken by this ball to reach at this point from maximum height this is t2 and we already mentioned it capital T equal to t1 plus t2 
and this t1 is nothing but it is v minus u over g so we can see that uh, v equal to 0 so this is minus u over minus g so this will give me u by g right why it is negative sign because acceleration is in the vertically downward direction right so if it is then i can write down this t2 is also equal to u by g why it is because my hands are at the same level right so if i plug in this value over here then it will it will give me time capital t equal to twice of u divided by g now if i want to do the same thing here again and again i need to transfer this ball to my first hand but there is a problem the problem is uh, we don't have any ball to remain in air for all the time now let's take a next situation where i have uh, two balls in my hand i project the first ball up into the air with the same speed u it goes like this and comes to my second hand now here i have second ball to get it projected up into the air so i will project the second ball exactly at the same time when the first ball is just about to touch my second hand now i can ask you the question the question is what is the time gap between these two consecutive throw so here in this particular case i can say time gap is equal to capital t right now if i want to perform this uh, activity again and again i need to transfer this first ball to my first hand so the next situation is like uh, first ball is here it goes up into the air with the same speed u and it comes down to my second hand this is the second ball so i will throw this first ball again into the air when the second ball is just about to touch my second hand right now again i have the question what is the time gap between these two consecutive throw again it is equal to capital t right now if you take a look on this the time for which the second ball remains in air it is the same time for which the first ball remains in my hand this is something what we call it stay time and stay time includes also the transferring of ball from one hand to another hand okay so we can say that stay time is equal to time gap this is a extremely important result now let's take a look on number of balls which are in air for all the time here we can see if uh, capital n is the number of balls and here it is what it is 2 then we can say the number of balls which remain in air for all the time it is 1 right now let's take a next situation where we have three balls in my hand now let's assume the situation here i have uh, three balls in my hand and i throw the first ball up into the air with the uh, speed u and after time gap t i throw the second ball up into the air with the speed u exactly at the same instant of time when the second ball is at its maximum height now i can write down uh, this uh, small t is equal to capital t upon 2 right now let's see what happens after next time gap after next time gap i throw the third ball up into the air with the same speed u exactly at the same point when the first ball is going to touch my second hand now what about the second ball second ball must be at its maximum height again i can write down this small t is equal to capital t by 2 right now if we look uh, the situation very carefully then we can see that uh, there are two balls that remain in air for all the time so if we have capital n equal to 3 this is what the total number of balls then we have number of balls it is n minus 1 
right and we can see here this is also verified right now let's take a look on this here we have t is equal to capital t by 2 if we rearrange this then i can write down this as capital t equal to twice of small t and what is this 2 this is nothing but n minus 1 so i can generalize the formula capital t equal to n minus 1 this is nothing but the number of balls that remain in air for all the time and what about this capital t this is twice of u by g and it is equal to capital n minus 1 into t so this is a very important formula now let's take a look on a numerical problem and we'll see that how we can use the formula to solve that particular problem. The problem statement is a juggler is juggling seven balls simultaneously and if the time gap of transferring the ball from one hand to another is two seconds then what is the maximum height attained by the balls. So here we have the information of capital N it is seven small t is two second and here we have to find out h max now to find out h max we should have the value of this u u is what the projection speed here we have the formula 2u divided by g is equal to n minus 1 into t now let's rearrange this formula u equal to g over 2 capital n minus 1 into t so let's plug in the value it is 10 upon 2 7 minus 1 into 2 so after solving we can have this value 60 meter per second now to solve h max we have this formula v square is equal to u square plus 2 g h max and if you plug in the value of v it is 0 at maximum height and we can have this value is equal to 3600 minus 20 into h max so it will give us h max is equal to 180 meter so this is the solution to our problem so that's all for today and if you have any doubt then you can reach out to me in comment box then i will definitely reply back to your comments so that's all for today and i will see you in my next video until then keep watching and stay connected for further updates